Jossie Ross, before here was here. This is 50.com, Jack Thriller. Peace. Cash on delivery. Yeah. Yo, Jassy, man, what's one of some of the biggest misconceptions about Native Americans? We, we fall into one or two categories. Either people really, really feel sorry for us, you know, mm -hmm. like, oh, they're poor, they're this, that, and the third, alcoholics, blah, blah, blah. Or alternatively think we all got bread because of casinos. Mm -hmm. And the truth is that the average Native person is average. You know, the average, just like an average American is average person trying to get bread, trying to put their kids through school. I got two kids, one of my sons, uh, a nephew that I raised, he's not my biological son, but he's my nephew, is graduating this year. Okay, how are we gonna put him through school? You know, trying to just figure out average shit, like average American problems. And I think that people think that reservations or Native people are somehow removed from those realities. Mm -hmm. And the truth is, we're really not. Mm -hmm. You know, we have, you know, we're gonna sit there. My, my son loves ridiculousness and, you know, he's gonna sit there and watch that shit and go play basketball and stuff. There's certain cultural things that are absolutely different mm -hmm. and they're set aside. But, you know, that's one of the biggest misconceptions is that there's, that, that we're somehow just completely separate from the rest of America. Word, word. Yeah. Make dog, tell me, uh, all the things that you are, man. Yeah. What you qualify to do. You're an author. Yeah. Poet. Yeah. Uh, 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 I'm a lawyer by trade. I'm an attorney by trade. Columbia Law School, Ivy League educated. And I'm not saying that as a superioristic thing. No, no, I'm no. Saying that's an opportunity. No, no, no. Fuck that. Yeah. No, no. That was that was an Tell opportunity. I come from a broke family, so it was an opportunity to change our economics. Okay. And then, you know, I, simultaneously I was always doing the writing thing. Writing's mm -hmm. big to me. Literacy is big in my family. We're storytellers. I'm a dad first and foremost. Mm -hmm. You know, I love being a dad. Um, I'm an author. I, I have several books out. Now I got the CD. How many Before here was here. I have two books. You have two books. I have two books. Are I have any one of them audio? Um, no. No. I mean, uh, you got a great speaking voice, man. You got to make an audio book. And they, I'm not just saying that. No, no, I appreciate it. Because I don't want to buy the book. It's right. just, I got one eye, yeah. and it's hard for me to focus with that. I've heard yeah. that. Yeah. What, what, what's the name of your books, man? And what's the con content of it? This project is called Before Here Was Here, and it's trying to give a more mature energy to say that, yeah, this energy is honest, but there's also this other energy that's a little bit more fatherly. It's gonna take take you aside. Like, you, you ever watch the movie Colors? Yes. When, he, when, when Hodges said to Pac-Man, you can walk down the hill, or you can run down the you hill. Run, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I want to walk down the hill, and I'm gonna I'm I'm screw all those cows. All the cows. All the, I want all the cows, and, mm -hmm. and that's what I'm doing with this. I'm, I, I have, you know, uh, Slug from Atmosphere on there. I have Abiyaduna Oyewole from The Last Poets, and we're really just walking down the hill where we talk, have a mature conversation like we're having here. We can turn up, mm -hmm. but we can also turn down and have a conversation. Word, word, word. Yeah. It's called How to Say I Love You in Indian. Mm. Yeah, it's love. Yeah, you gotta story. explain that. Well, you know, it's uh, well. F first of all, we go back to this 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 topic of um, you know being very few Native Americans, mm -hmm. and so the way that we said "I love you" is very similar. I also love to study slave narratives as well. The way that we've said "I love you" historically was by action and not by word, by surviving. Like I'm gonna do everything in my power to stay alive as the father because I have a duty to raise my sons or I have a duty to make sure that my bloodline continues to exist. That's the strongest expression of love is continued existence and survival. And that wasn't always a guaranteed thing for neither Africans nor uh, native people because we were pushed so hard, we were pressured. They said, nah, you're gonna die out. And like, nah, our love is gonna keep us alive. So that's what the project was about, was about those stories of, of perseverance and love and survival. So who is Jossie and what does the name Jossie mean? And I'm so excited to hear it too. Cause you guys' names really be meaning someone. We be saying some shit, we be making shit up. Yeah, yeah. My, my name is Jossie Unagumsaka. My name, uh, my, my first name Jossie is actually a Ghanaian African word. Wow. Jossie. Jossie means wonderful child. Wonderful child. Yeah, because my, my father and my mom, they were in this uh, multicultural communications class. And they, they said, we're gonna put every name, we're gonna put names in a hat. And we need, because we don't know if it's gonna be a girl or a boy, you know, nothing really showing up on that ultrasound. Um, so, you know, we need something that's gonna be either either gender. And they picked out Jossie. Mm. And Unagumsaka is a Blackfoot word, my language, which means uh, young wise man. And so I try to live up to that name. My whole family has pretty cool names. My, my brother's name is Sutagyayo, which means rainy bear. My sister's name is Neoma Lee. Mm. And then I have one sister named Wendy. 
<laughs> wow. And, yeah, I, and she gets mad because my mom, she said my mom was lazy when she named her. That was lazy as fuck. She, what did she? Uh, mom, what we thinking? So what you working on these days, man? What we promoting right now? Right now, the project before here was here. Before here was but here. here I like that. Yeah, it's it's a CD. It's a it, to me. It's gotten a great reaction. Dove has been doing a great job getting the word out there. It's hip hop, but it's also spoken word poetry. Mm -hmm. It's also just conversation. Have and you shot videos for it yet? Yeah, we shot one video. It's called Marlon Brando. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a really, really dope video. Okay. It's shot by Dave Wilson. The, the label is K Cabin Games, put out by K Records, who put out a lot of real cool, kind of white boy -y shit. Uh, mm -hmm. Beck, Modest Mouse, you know, alternative stuff. Mm -hmm. And they saw some promise in this particular project. Marlon Brando is a dope video. Mm. And it's a history lesson. It's a throwback to, I love that, like I was saying, Chief Keef, the Migos, like I love the energy of that, but I also love old school hip hop. Mm. You know, KRS-One and Melly Mel are my favorite rappers of all time. And so it's sort of a tribute to Melly Mel, I mean, excuse me, KRS, how KRS would just, you know, have a history lesson. You know, why is that? It is a history lesson on, on a beat. Mm. And that's what, I, that's what I tried to do with this. Word, word, sir. If your life was a movie, what would it become? Uh, it would be called um, Coming to America. And, and the reason why is because even though we're the first people here, we've been here for 40,000 years on this continent, America doesn't know us. America has a lot of misconceptions around us. And, and uh, that's one of the reasons why I put this stuff into the general public, into the quote unquote mainstream, to show that we have significant and compelling stories. Now, I have a lot of questions, because you all right, we don't know yeah. like a lot about Indians right. and Native Americans. Man. The first book is called Don't Know Much About Indians, but I wrote a book about us anyway. Wow. Yeah, so I mean, because just for that reason, it was like the introduction in a contemporary sense. I don't mean to cut you off, no, cut but, me off. but it's that, yeah, I mean, there's, there's now a whole generation of Native kids who grew up to hip hop. Mm. And that's, that bugs people out. Like, mm. oh man, you know, like they got, they go hip hop, you know, they, they go to a hip hop club on Friday night and they go into ceremony, like deep native ceremony, mm. spiritual and shit, coyotes, mm. bears. Today. On Saturday, yeah, wow. they're, they're doing that the next day. Mm. But we grew up with hip hop, mm. you know, so it's, it's, it's that juxtaposition mm. and it's getting past, you know, like, oh, we can't just paint you into one particular corner. There's mm. a whole bunch of different corners there. Mm. You know, it's like when people first found out that there's black Republicans. Black folks in, in, in you know, uh, 1992, they had a problem with Clarence Thomas because like, oh shit, there's a, there's, a, there's a black person that's a Republican, he's a redneck. Mm. But we don't know what to do with that because we haven't seen that before. Mm. No, we're all diversifying. We're all becoming our own people. Mm. What, what do you guys eat? I'm out here. I don't, I don't want to cool. say it. That shit, right. that, that, that felt so bad. Taco. <laughs> yeah, we eat tacos. We eat tacos. Yeah. <laughs> we, we eat localized. So everything that was here. Okay. Sweet potatoes, salmon, like all the, the main, the, the lobster. Like I grew up with, for me, poor people food. My dad's a fisherman. So poor people food, when we were dead broke, had no money. We ate salmon and clams and oysters and crab. That's rich people shit. Right, exactly. Because we got that for free. That's what we've been living, eating exactly as our ancestors had for thousands of years. Mm. And it wasn't, people think that that's rich people food. You get sick of crab eating that every, like, oh God, another one? Because you that had nothing. To, right, no, I hate it. This is terrible. But yeah, I mean, you know, on the coast in Seattle, my, my folks are fishermen. Mm -hmm. My folks are fishermen, so we get that for, you know, we get that. We go we go get that out of the ground. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not like we're buying it at Safeway. Mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're getting it out of the ground. So where can people find this project? Before Here Was Here is available on iTunes, K Records website. It's available for download um, as of May 12th. Right here, man. Is there anything you want to say to this <clears throat> before we get up out here? Jack Thriller, thank you very much, my brother. Pleasure is all mine, sir. This is 50.com. Thank you very much. Before here was here. I appreciate all you guys. Love, support, peace. We're going to have a great time. We float high. Goodbye. We will miss y'all. And don't kiss the moles in the mouth unless you got to.